You guys, I didn't think I was going to have anything to talk about today, but now I suddenly have things to talk about, at least to tell you about. This was a very, very upsetting shopping trip. Not upsetting, um, not like really upsetting, like stuff that I should be so upset about, but I got very upset. <laughs> I'm very emotional, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But when I left the store, I mean, I had just gone through so much in the store, and I was just not thinking, and I'm not kidding. I went up to a red car and was right at the door pushing my thing and wondering why I couldn't hear the unlocking sound. And I was like, why is there a woman getting in my car? Now, I'm standing about a foot away from the driver's side door, and a woman is getting ready to get in on the passenger side. And I looked at her, and then it dawned on me, not my fucking car. And not only that, not only was there a woman getting in, there was a woman in the driver's seat with the window down and her arm out. And I'm still standing next to that trying to get in. What the fuck, man? How embarrassing. And I just looked and I said, this isn't my car. And of course they laughed. And then I just said, I'll go find the next red one. <laughs> it looked exactly like my car, I think. I don't know. At least it was red. I've got that going for me. So, um, okay. I guess I'll start with what upset me in the store. And I, uh, I cried like a baby to a manager in Hannaford. Huh? How proud am I of that? Over the stupidest thing. You guys who have been with me for a long time, you know, I mean, I think everybody knows I have social anxiety and people think, well, no, you don't because you're doing YouTube. That is completely different. But I have social anxiety and there are certain things that still bother me to the point where I have a knot in my stomach. But I do it because I want the items so bad. And one of them is going to a deli. I rather just shop and, you know, keep to myself. But if I go to the deli, I'm forced to communicate. And I have things that I like a certain way. And I just feel like I really shouldn't be asking for such favors. And uh, you might remember a while ago I told a story about years ago, like years and years ago, I don't know, 8, 10, 15 years ago, I asked for shaved roast beef and the person said, oh, I don't have time to shave it. And uh, she's like, you know, that takes a long time. And for years, I didn't ever dare ask for shaved roast beef again. And then I asked for it once in here, and I think I talked about that in a video. I was, like, so proud of myself that I asked for shaved roast beef. And those people were, like, so cool about it because I felt the need to explain to them that it was okay. If they didn't have time to do it, I understood. And, you know, they're like, well, if, you know, if that's what you want, that's what we're going to cut for you. And I ended up telling them my story. Because I'm sure they were so interested in that. And um, then I told you guys, because I'm sure you're so interested in that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. And um, so I had gotten my shaved roast beef, and I think I asked for it one more time, but then I, then I kind of like started chickening out and didn't feel like asking for shaved anymore, because I just, ha, 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 I couldn't get past the, um, you know, the image that that first person had put into my mind about it taking a long time. But I at least did it, and I think I could do it again. All right, so now let's go to another time with the roast beef. Here at Hannaford, I got roast beef, and I got home with it, and it was like brown. I don't remember if I talked about that on a video or not. So I knew it was like the ends. It wasn't that it was rotten. It was just, and I could tell by the size of the slices. I mean, I like them like this big and nice and pink. And I was so bummed because, you know, it's anywhere, it's like usually $8.99 per pound, unless it's on sale. It was on sale today for $6.99. But I just couldn't, I could not bring myself to keep those two pounds of roast beef. So I came back to Hannaford and I told them, I said, look, every time I get roast beef here, it's nice and pink, but this is not any pink at all. I've even had end pieces that still had pink. And she's like, yeah, it must have been, you know, the ends. So I said, you know, I just, 
I'm so sad, but you know, I, I really don't want this. And she was like, no problem. You can go and get more if you want in exchange. And you know, but make sure you ask them to show it to you first. And so I even asked, am I allowed to ask them to cut one in half if I need the center? And she said, no, we won't do that. But you're allowed to say it needs to be the center. I'd like to see it or I don't want any. So I've been doing that. That has worked out great. I, I try to remember and say I need to see it and they hold it up and I'm like, okay, cool. This time I come in and the person right ahead of me asked for roast beef. So the guy took it and he put it right down on the thing. So at this point, I didn't get to, to see it. And I said, you know, I'm going to want some roast beef too. I said, but I need to know, are you, are you in the center? I said, because it needs to be nice and pink. So he holds it up and it looked pretty pink to me. And I was like, okay, that'll be good for me. And, um, I, because another person called my number, but yet she was waiting for that roast beef. So I explained to her, and I'm sure the other guy heard also, because they're like standing right next to each other. I explained to her, I said, I need to make sure that it's pink. So I only want it if it's the center. I don't want the ends and I'm getting two pounds worth. And she's like, that's fine. Or whatever she said. So I wait and, and she's slicing, 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 and then she's slicing some more and she puts um, a package on top of the, you know, the, the counter. And as I reach to grab it, I noticed that the stuff that she was slicing wasn't pink. It looked brown. And I said, oh, I said, that, that doesn't look pink like I wanted and she's like well no it's now it's at the end of the thing at the you know the end of the meat whatever you know what I'm talking about I said but yeah but I said I wanted only if I could have the center and another guy who never heard the initial conversation I don't believe came and he said well, but that's that's what we're up to. That's what we have. And she says that I only have another half pound to cut. So she had given me a pound. She had sliced a half a pound and she was out of that. And she had to open a new one for another half a pound. I said, but I don't want it. And the guy said, but yeah, but that's what we're up to. I said, yeah, but I specifically said I only wanted it if it was in the center, that it needed to be pink. And she's like, just looking at me and not saying much. And I was like, just never mind and I gave back the pound that they already sliced for me but I was absolutely sick to my stomach that it's so hard for me to ask for anything at the deli as it is and I asked and I'm pretty sure I was clear and I wasn't being bitchy about it at all I was asking very nice and explaining that I only want it if it's coming from the center she ignored that sliced me the end and knew she was going to open up another one and have to slice more of the end. So I was gonna get a, a complete pound of just ends. <sighs> I turned around and I was so just upset and almost like more upset at myself that I continue to try to get what I want because I feel like it's not in my picture to get what I want ever. And it's what stops me from so many things, from hiring people to fix my house. You know, I, it's like I'm clear I, and I don't believe I'm asking for them to perform magic tricks. I'm just saying this is what I would like. And if I can't have that, that's fine. But yet they want to somehow just give me something else and, and it makes me feel like I've asked for too much and I could be crying right now but I cried enough in the store <laughs> so, so I got it out of my system I actually wanted to talk to a manager and I hated to go ask for a manager because I don't like to ask I didn't want to go to the service desk I walked around that store because I often see a manager walking around until I found someone who looked like a manager and I said are you a manager and he said I'm one of them and I said, I'd like to, you know, tell you what happened. And I start fucking bawling. But I did explain to him that I suffer from social anxiety and it's hard for me to even go to a deli counter. And I try very hard to just, you know, ask for what I want. And, you know, I, I just told him the whole story like I told you. And he, you know, he must be saying, holy shit, am I going to have something to talk about at the water cooler? <laughs> it's like. You know, he offered me things. It's like, no. And I even told him about, you know, the shaved roast beef incident years ago as a way to explain to him that 
what happened today has ruined me now from ever going to their deli counter again. And, you know, I said, you know, I just wanted him to, to know, hopefully to explain to others that, to the employees, that just listen to what the person has said. And if you can't fulfill their wishes, there's nothing wrong with saying, we can't do that and let me walk away without making the sale. Because now they lost me completely. I am so embarrassed and I'm never willing to take that chance again. Absolutely not. And he was like wanting to go, Jesus Christ, somebody pushed a cart into the corral. <laughs> He, um, you know, he wanted to go and we'll get you some roast beef. And, you know, I was like, there's absolutely no way that I'm going there again. I'm going to avoid even going by the deli. But anyway, I cried the whole time. I don't even know if I have, I, I had actually put some, some mascara on, but that's all gone. And, um, you know, I just, I just cried and, you know, I was actually making him laugh. I'm like, I'm a little upset. Can you tell? He's like, yes, I can tell. You know, <laughs> he knew. I think he got, I don't know. I don't know what he fucking got. He probably just wanted to get away from me. But I felt like he was understanding, at least by the way he was talking to me. He seemed to understand that it was a big issue for me to order fucking roast beef from the center. And that I was disappointed in how that was handled and I you know I thanked him and I you know I thanked him for just listening and letting me get it off my chest I needed to get it off my chest I, I wouldn't have been able to continue shopping in the state that I was in and as you can see it you know it still was with me because I was trying to get into a car with a woman in the driver's seat <laughs> another one trying to get in so that's how my shopping went. And I came home without roast beef. Very sad about that. I am very sad. And uh, But, you know, I, I have to take care of myself and I'm not going to subject myself to that again, to feeling that way. Some things, it's just better to just go without. Just go without it instead of taking a chance that I'm going to go through that again and feel that way. I understand mistakes totally, but I I can't... I don't know how else to ask. You know, I don't know how to get what I want. I really don't. <laughs> it's either that I'm failing miserably in that department or that people just don't fucking listen or pay attention or care. I'd like to think it's not me. I'd like to think that I know how to ask a simple thing. You know, I don't know. All right. Whew. I came here for bread because my mother is completely out of bread. I had some frozen rolls that I make her Italian sandwiches in, so I took one of those out of the freezer for her for lunch because Nancy said, oh, your, your mom needs some bread. I'm going to go to the freezer and get some bread. I was like, oh, my God, I have no bread. I just bought three loaves the last time I was here, but those are gone. And uh, so I came out for bread. I got her three more loaves. I got her a couple bananas. I got her a couple tomatoes. I got um, my Self some broiled chicken at least it's not what my my tongue was wanting I wanted roast beef and uh, but uh, I'll I'll have some nice broiled chicken and they didn't have any like uh, beef on sale I might go to Rogers after and pick up that 10 pound bag of chicken legs that I can boil and my mother and I both can take all the meat off the bones when it's cooked and then freeze that and then but I can also give some to Nancy to grind with the food processor and it's so good she grinds a whole bunch and then we freeze little bags of it ground and then I just take that out in no time that thaws and then my mother has uh, some meat for sandwich spread I don't know am I up to it am I am I am I up to it I don't know I'll decide oh but I did want to show you guys because I was gonna get her a donut here like I do but when I left the house I said oh, I'm gonna swing by Cumberland Farms which is a, a chain we have in this neck of the woods and pick up some of their chocolate donuts I had talked about them before I've talked about them several times I'm sure but the last time I went they didn't have any and this time they did and I said I'm gonna see it's 329 for six but it's still cheaper than buying donuts by you know one at a time or by the half dozen here at the store these are my mother's absolute favorite donuts in the world and when I was a donut eating human being they're fucking awesome 
we're, we like the donuts that are like a typical donut with the hole. Not like the doughy kind. I'm going to say more like the cake-like donuts. But, but these are Devil Foods chocolate, and they're glazed, and they're just fantastic. And they are Cumberland Farms brand, farmhouse bakery, old-fashioned donuts. And they look like this. And I paid $3.29 for six, but still a very good price considering what you pay. Like, I buy her one donut at a time here, and I pay, what, 89 cents or 99 cents for a donut? And, and they do come in the white, and they also come, like, uh, two uh, different of each of, like, the powdered ones. White powdered and cinnamon and something else. These are her favorite. And there was a time we used to be able to get them sometimes on sale, two boxes for four bucks. And I used to buy that and, and freeze them. I individually wrap them, but then I put them back in the box. So my mother will be happy about that. Other than that, um, I've got her bread and I don't know. I was going through the store like a blind person after all that. But there's a whole new section that I haven't seen yet of self-checkout. So I used that, so that was cool. Um, the other thing I'm going to talk about briefly, because I have been getting people telling me that ASMR is just weird, they don't get it, they don't know why I want to do that stuff, and I want to explain because I'm so passionate about ASMR, and I want people to know that it's not weird. There's um, people who absolutely love the kooky sounds that I'm making in my videos. First of all, ASMR. You're going to have to look it up. I'll link down below. I never know what the words are. I, I get confused with that. It took me long enough to know ASMR. And I'm like, as Mr. As Mr. That's how I would remember it. But people listen to that or watch it because it can um, happen to you by listening or by, you know, looking at visuals. Fire truck. Fire truck. And the way... I describe it for myself. It's like when I listen to certain sounds, I just melt. It's like every worry in the world is drained from my body. And the sounds that I like to listen to are the kind that like block out my brain thoughts. And it allows me to fall asleep, sometimes within minutes. It is amazing. The way I discovered it is a long time ago, we're talking over three years ago, probably more like four years ago, when I was thinking about doing some doodling videos, I was looking up doodling videos just to see what people were doing. And it's while watching a doodling video that the woman was just doodling and not talking. And it wasn't like intricate. It was like lines and things like that. And I just found that so soothing. And I mean, and I know that there are sounds, certain sounds that soothe us. But it was watching her do that that was like, oh my God. It's like the soothingness is exaggerated. Then she would stop and just rub her hands all over the page. And it was big. It was like a big artist sketch pad. And I was like... That's weird, but I love it. And I noticed that there was ASMR in the title, and that didn't really... I just thought that was some kind of coding or something. I had no clue. So I would continue to watch that, and then other things were popping up on the side that also had ASMR. So that's, you know, when I decided, okay, i got to look this up. And I was like, oh, wow. And it made me remember that when I was going to college and there was a particular gas station I would go to when I would be in Portland that he would still, it was still, they were wiping, washing the windshield and when he would rub the squeegee across my windshield I felt like just melting into my seat and sleeping and I was like wow that's just so weird and I used to love to go to that gas station because when the squeegee went across and just that little bit of sound and just the motion I was like oh. So, now I knew that was ASMR, and I also knew that when my mother would say, oh my God, every time you crinkled the bag of potato chips, because I lived with potato chips for a very big part of my life, she would say, it just, it, it's, it's like, just sends shivers down my spine. That was ASMR. So, almost everybody enjoys ASMR, they just don't know it. If you like the sound of rain, or a fan, or for me, before all of this, it was just that the TV had to be on, but it had to be the right kind of either show or movie, because it had to be something interesting enough to get my mind off life, but yet soothing enough to 
um, let me fall asleep. I didn't want to be so interested in it that I would be staying awake just to see the ending or whatever. So like I loved repeats of movies that I enjoyed and things like that or different TV shows and um, or different cooking shows like I like Chopped. I you know I, I can fall asleep to that because there's a lot of clattery noise. I personally like the loud rough aggressive sounds. It needs to block out my um my thoughts. But with that said, I do enjoy the quiet sounds too. Like, I loved when my husband would watch golf. Go and I would be like, oh, I could just throw myself on the couch. And even if I didn't nap, it was just so relaxing to hear the soft speaking and, you know, and things like, and then the applause. People clap because somebody hit a ball and got it close to a hole. I think that's fun. I think sports, when you really think of it, it's just so ridiculous. But, yeah, people enjoy it. And, you know, and then, of course, Bob Ross, the painter, he's famous for being, like, the accidental ASMR artist. You will see sometimes in titles, accidental ASMR. And that might be something that, like, somebody's just sewing with no idea what ASMR is, but, you know, people will say, oh, there, I found some accidental ASMR, meaning this is a good video to watch, even though that person wasn't creating it for people who like ASMR. So Bob Ross, you know, it's perfect. He was doing things. People could watch the visuals. He talked in a very soft voice. He would make the, you know, the brush go when he would try to, you know, uh, shake the water off it. It was just all ASMR and people, there's people who absolutely are still hooked to Bob Ross for that reason. So that's what it's all about. And when you see me creating sounds, I'm passionate about that. I absolutely love it because I do get feedback that even my ASMR skills are helping others and I can't even imagine that I could do anything so awesome as to help someone to fall asleep. Now I don't get a lot of comments there yet because my channel is still only 850 subscribers and uh, you know I'm trying to grow it. I did start it three years ago, over three years ago because after maybe a year of being hooked to ASMR I wanted to create it because I wanted so much and I did for like a year. Those videos are all private now. I haven't even listened to them because I just, oh, I don't even remember what they are. But then I went like two years that I didn't record at all and I'm back to that on that channel and it really is becoming more of my focus and I don't want people to think I'm abandoning this channel because I have no plans on doing that because I took a long time to grow this channel but this channel, the growth is kind of static and you guys know I like to see growth. My ASMR channel has tons of room for growth. So it's exciting to me and I feel like what I'm providing for content is so helpful to others that that feels so good. It feels so good. Even in my few comments that I do get, you know, people are like, oh, I fell asleep to this or I love this. And, you know, and it's, it's the sounds that we have in common. And I like, oh, that poor woman dropped her groceries there's an employee helping her else I would have gone to help her um, and the whole dynamics of the channel is different for me I, I like comments there I like suggestions there as long as they're ASMR related the other bullshit is never going to be allowed on that channel I don't need people coming from you know other places to give me hell about stuff I just find that an ASMR channel is not as much of an attraction to trolls because they're not going to hang around. The videos are like, trolls will watch me because it's like I'm a train wreck factor and they like that. They love to hate me. They're not going to watch ASMR videos and say, oh, you tapped that the wrong way. You know, it doesn't hold their interest. So they might come in, say something stupid about what I'm doing and then leave or and then I block them. And, um, you know, but other than that, the people who love sounds, you know, they'll make suggestions and I'm like, oh my God, that sounds awesome. And so I, I try to create that or I try to find public domain clips that I can use to create, you know, videos out of public domain sound clips and stuff. So it's all very creative and I'm working very, very, very hard on it, especially right now because I want to have all my videos scheduled for while Skylar's here. And I'm trying to do four per week. And as of right now, I think I have eight more days that I can work on this. And I still have like, 
18 videos. I'm trying to do two per day. I'm working from the minute I get up until very late at night on just that stuff, other than the few things that I'm throwing in here for you guys. But then once that is done, I will have a little bit more time to record for you guys. But I just want you to know that I'm very excited about that part. It's, you know, it's new and it's something that I can watch grow. I'm still just conflicted though about so many other things like it would have been cool to have that on this channel where I am already earning I'm already monetized and that YouTube would be able to spit those videos out because I'm in a position where YouTube does that for me where they don't on that other channel that's not even monetized that could take months to get monetized I guess even when I hit the 1,000 subscribers I've got enough watch time but I need a thousand subscribers some people are saying that they're getting feedback from eBay that it's taking up to seven months to get the channel monetized so I'm very conflicted about that but but I really think ASMR it needs its own channel and um, I'm just conflicted about a lot of things. I talk about it a lot in Patreon. I'm trying to keep negativity off this channel for a while. I just need to be able to relax and not ruffle feathers. You know, right now I'm stressed about so many things. I feel like I'm, I need a change in my career. Skylar's coming. I, you know, I, I just, I have so much on my mind and I just don't know how to deal with things. And my battery was dying, so I have another camera. Um, you know, I'm the person who cries because of a roast beef order at the deli. So you can imagine how hard stressful things are for me. I shouldn't be crying in a store over roast beef, you know. So, I, you know, I just, I take things to heart. I'm very emotional and I'm doing the best that I can. And it was a little over two years ago that I was sitting in this exact parking lot and I tried to watch one of the videos but then I needed to come I needed to come to the store because my mother needs bread and um but it was you know like March when I changed March of 2016 where I changed from being a coupon blogger to going full-time YouTube and I remember crying often in the car and it was so scary it was so scary and I felt like I lost so much and I was you know going for something that I had no clue if I could make it work. But I did make it work, and I did lose a lot. You know, I, I used to talk about it a lot then, I don't so much now, but my blog was getting anywhere from five to 10,000 views per day, and when I left that and said that I was gonna stop doing the scan of the store flyer, Shaw's flyer, it went down to like 200 views per day. That was shocking. People were leaving my Facebook page. It was like, I feel like I had lost everything. But I hung on to the new thing, which was YouTube. And I know somewhere in a video I said, um, because people had started finding me for, you know, like a hair video and stuff, and they had nothing to do with the couponing and stuff. And they were letting me know, I don't care about your coupon deals. I'm here for, you know, the other stuff. Or when you talk in the car. And I was like, okay, I think I have an audience who can get me through this transition. And... I was so grateful for that, that people were letting me know that they didn't care about that other stuff and it gave me something to hope for. But I remember saying somewhere, this too will change. This too will change. And it has. I absolutely don't feel the same way about recording as I have. It, you know, it's, I've been doing the full time YouTube, you know, almost daily and multiple times a day for over two years now. And I just need something else because there's a lot of rewarding things about doing what I do, but there's a lot of things that are not rewarding. And you guys know I struggle with the social aspect of it, and I also struggle when I can't make something continue to grow. It's just not fun for me anymore. I like to see the growth. I am happy with where I got this channel. I'm happy if it just stays at this. I am going to continue to upload here, chat with you guys, do things. I know I will be back to maybe more of the 
fun things after Skyla's trip. I know that's asking a lot for you to hang around until she comes and then after she leaves, but that's because right now I really have to work on the ASMR channel and I can't let that go static for three weeks. So I'm doing very, I'm doing the very best that I can to fill that. And then, you know, after all that, I'll be back to, you know, some kind of a routine, but, um, you know, I just wanted to explain all that to you guys, and I didn't mean to keep you here forever, but apparently I have been recording for a long time because I already drained the battery of one camera, so <laughs> I have to do a lot of editing to make this watchable. Anyway, thank you so much, um... And don't give up on me with the fabric either. I, I have not said no to that. I do have some plans, but again, I'm just very busy right now with other stuff. And, uh, you know, just hang in there. It's all going to work out. I've gone through change before and survived, and I'm going to survive this too. And I know I'm going to lose a lot of you, but there will be others. There just will, because that's what happens. It's out with the old, in with the new. All right, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.